morning or good morning or afternoon, depending on where you're joining from. Uh, you are in naturopathic residencies, just about everything you need to know for the next application. Uh, so I, I thank you all for coming. And uh, if you do miss part of this, uh, it will be recorded, is being recorded, and the recording will be sent out as well. Uh, so if you miss something or you want to go back, the recordings will be available. Uh, you can also share the recordings with your classmates or anybody else who may be interested in this. So uh, what are we going to do today? We're going to talk residencies, but more than anything, I want to make this more conversational. Um, this, we have already, the schools have already done info sessions on the nuts and bolts of the actual application and what have you. This is meant to be more of a conversation, answering your questions, making sure you have all the tools and the information you need in order to uh, apply and be a successful candidate. So um, with, with that, we're gonna just cover introductions of the folks that we have today so you know who's here, um, go through just some of the basic nuts and bolts of residencies, the application process and timeline, and then leave plenty of time for Q&A. So with that, I am going to <clears throat> introduce our panel here. Um, so I'm the AANMC Executive Director. AANMC is the organization that oversees the residency application process and convenes the residency committee. Um, we have with us Dr. Gary Garcia from Bastyr. We have Dr. Dee Saunders from NUNM, uh, Dr. Carino, Jasmine Carino from CCNM, and Dr. Kevin Barnett from Sonoran University. Um, we also have Emily. Uh, I don't know if you're on camera or not, but Emily is the person who will be answering your emails when you email residency at, at anmc.org. So please be kind. <laughs> well, we're doing our best to get you answers. And uh, But um, this is the team that you're going to be working with as you go through the residency application process. And so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Carino. Yes, hello, everyone. It's really exciting to have you here. Obviously, you are on the next stage of your thinking about what your future entails and residencies as part of it. So just looking at it from who coordinates these, what is, what, um, is the responsibility of the different organizations? Uh, the CNME is a really critical piece to ensure that your residency experience is um, meeting the standards that have been set out by the accrediting agency. So we have the Council on Naturopathic Medical, Exam um, Medical Educators, uh, which recognizes the accredited naturopathic medical colleges that oversees residency sites. So for instance, all of us here from the different institutions um, have, uh, we, we have an opportunity to audit, examine, and approve of sites all across both nations. Uh, and um, we also convene the um, AANMC Residency Committee. So that's part of the AANMC, which comprises of the residency directors. Uh, we're continually uh, committed to improving the postgraduate education experience so that we can have expansion of residency opportunities across the US and Canada. Next slide, please. And so why are you applying for a residency? What are the things that you're thinking about? And you know, as you're imagining what your future holds, um, many of you are thinking, how can I see more pathologies? How can I get started with, um, you know, things sort of set up for me. So imagine a residency where you're seeing a minimum of 500 patient encounters during the course of their residency. And this is just upon graduation within the first one, two or three years. Um, so you'll see many pathologies, many patients, uh, and you will also receive specialized training depending on the residency that you select. Is there something that you want to gain a deeper knowledge of? Is it oncology? Is it primary care? Is it women's health? So as you are scoping the kinds of residencies that you are interested in, um, please do look to see what is available. And then of course, part of, part of being part of the naturopathic community is to expand your breadth and to understand who's out there. Expanding your teachers and mentors and gaining exposure to different practitioners and practice styles. 
So I hope as I was speaking that you got excited because there's a lot to be excited about with regards to the residency program. And um, let's take that forward as you consider the nuts and bolts of applying for a residency. Thank you, Dr. Carino. Dr. Burnett. Thank you. Yes, um, and this is going to vary uh, what residents do uh, from residency to residency. And so it varies quite a bit. As, um, affiliate sites could range in general medicine to all kinds of specialties. And then uh, that would be different from the institutional residencies, which tend to have a more academic um, orientation. But you will develop and follow professional program study based on your residency. Um, and you'll, practice, you'll learn how to practice safely and effectively and um, have a good example of compassionate care from your mentors. And um, if you're doing things in, um, whether you're doing things in uh, universities, uh, the colleges or the affiliate sites, you'll still be doing all the components, but in various ways. So you might have grand rounds, your continuing education experiences will vary, um, but you'll still have public and professional lecturing opportunities and research and scholarly activities that you'll do, whether you, no matter what residency you do. And um, you will work 40 to 60 hours a week. Um, this could vary greatly as well. Um, I know at the institutions, it tends to be on the higher end, but um, that could very well be on the higher end for um, the affiliate sites as well. Um, the patient care and supportive services are your orientation. It's uh, clinical and academic and um, more academic in the institutions. You'll learn the art of doctoring after you get out of school. This is a great opportunity to see the art of doctoring rather than mostly the science of doctoring. Um, you'll participate in committees. Uh, this will be more the case in institutional places. Um, academic course instruction also will be more so and the institutions, there'll be opportunities to do lots of mentoring of undergraduate naturopathic students at the colleges. Um, you'll supervise student clinical education to varying degrees. Um, the standard minimum right now, which will probably be changing is 38,000. Um, this will depend on cost of living, if you're in a large city or a small town, um, that sort of thing, and, and the capacity of the clinic that you will be affiliated with. But, um, it could vary greatly, so you'll want to check that. Um, this um, usually will include malpractice. There are benefits. There are time off requirements that will be allowed you. There often as uh, continuing education money is available to you. Um, so again, the cost of living is, a, is something that you'll want to consider. Um, make sure that you've done all your research. The CAP and ME does require 10 days of pay time off per year. So there'll be those kinds of benefits available. Thank you, Dr. Barmet. So um, uh, Dr. Garcia, please. Yes, so, so doing a residency is obviously highly recommended because it gives you an opportunity to continue to hone your clinical skills after you graduate. To date, there's only one state that really requires a residency and that's the state of Utah. But as you can see on this slide, there are a couple of states right here that already are going to include the, the residency in the final draft for licensure and so uh, completing a residency uh, um, is going to be a feather in your cap um, in case um, it becomes mandatory in future legislations so the key really thing to remember here as, as part of the phase one is to begin the process of building up your cvs um, and uh, putting it together, um, have somebody, um, maybe an advisor to review it. Um, it's important to, to highlight your leadership skills and your ability to organize in key events, such as DC Fly, for example. Um, it's also important to show your, the variety of um, clinical rotations and preceptorship that you attended. Uh, grades are important, at least for schools that provide um, um, actual numerical grades or letter grades. Um, in some institutions, this is this may not be the case, uh, such as for BASTI, for example, it's either you achieve competency, pass or fail. Um, the, the key here to remember is that you want to have a competitive looking, and for BASTI, for example, it would be in the form of less failures and probably as clean a transcript as you can have it. Um, 
if you do have some teaching background or research background, that would definitely be a, a plus. And if you happen to be um, is, um, have a different role in a previous life um, in terms of um, relevant experiences, such as maybe um, an MA, a PA, a nurse, for example, um, those are all uh, considered relevant experiences. Or even if you're actually doing a dual degree. Um, you not only are you completing an ND degree, but also an acupuncture degree or a midwifery degree. Um, now, um, if you have an opportunity to um, look at the available um, um, CNME approved residency um, sites and clinics, um, I highly encourage you to connect with them, and possibly arrange a visit or even do some preceptorship. The key really is to be just be organized um, and um, you want to make sure you, you get things done well before they're supposed to happen. So the, the, the buzzword here is pay attention to the timelines. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Garcia. Dr. Saunders. Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon for some of you as well. I think uh, Dr. Garcia set me up really well talking about the, being aware of um, timelines and due dates, et cetera. So for those of you that were able to attend or maybe watch one of the school-based um, residency information uh, sessions during uh, the naturopathic residency week, uh, you might be familiar with the concepts on this slide, and I don't want to get too far into it. If you haven't seen those presentations, I'm going to give you a link here in a couple of slides to be able to go and, and watch them. And we go into these phases far more in depth, but just the overall scaffolding is that the application process or residency is in, divided into two phases. We are currently in phase one. This is your real time to get stuff done to set yourself up. So there is a lot that you can be working on, capitalizing on the upcoming holiday breaks as much as possible. So phase one is now through January. Uh, you can log into the application portal, which will also have the link um, here for you either on a slide or in a chat. If you haven't already gone to that portal, and created a profile, I highly recommend doing it. I explore the sites that are there and uh, the job descriptions or any information that you might be able to see. You won't be able to apply for any yet. If there are any open sites that are available for applications, they're gonna be for folks that have, are already licensed. So anything posted now will not necessarily be an opening for you later, but you can explore um, past sites. You can prepare your documents, which um, Dr. Garcia was also talking about some of them as well. And over on the right-hand side of this slide, you can see the CV, your personal statement, essays, et cetera. You can get all of those documents, get them working on, get them ready. Uh, visit the resource library on the application portal for um, instructions on how to write a CV or instructions on how to write your essays. So all that's on the site. Prepare your documents, you can register your card, and then in phase two, when the application portal opens, you'll actually be able to view the sites that are hosting a resident for the next uh, year, 2023 to 2024, October to October, and you'll be able to submit your applications and then wait for interview season. It goes really quickly, um, the second phase, so doing everything you can in phase one. Next slide, please. Thank you. So this is a recap of the timeline. This is a great slide to take a screenshot of and make sure you have all the dates in your calendar. Alternatively, this timeline is also on that application portal on the homepage. Uh, you can click into the timeline there and just get an idea so that you can stay organized and not miss any uh, deadlines that may impact your uh, career. I think I lost my slide presentation there with the, with the deadlines, but I'll go ahead and keep talking about it. Um, so those timelines are important. They indicate when um, the applications will open. They'll indicate when the applications will close and various other requirements of you during those times as well, which will have more uh, information at a upcoming informa uh, info session at the start of the year once the application season is about to, to open. So more to come on that. But So there's a lot of deadlines here in phase two that may not make a ton of sense right now, and that's okay. We're going to really uh, cover those much harder uh, at our next session. So really focusing on the things you can do now in phase one. Next slide, please. 
And this is just a great resource slide um, for you all. The Naturopathic Residency Week playlist is on the YouTube uh, A&MC channel. And so this has the presentations from about oncology residencies, about the school residencies, about general medicine residencies. I think um, a couple of other really great presentations are on that uh, website. So if you missed how to access the phase one stuff and all of the things to do on the portal, <clears throat> you can watch those videos. And then they also got 20, about 22 different current sites to do a video about their own residency site. They're about 90 seconds long and that's on the Instagram page. And then by logging into the residency portal, you can also use the search function to do different keywords like oncology or general medicine to kind of look at different areas or different focuses of residencies. So now is really your time to really understand what different, how many different types of residencies exist. Now, granted, some of these may not be posted next year as openings, but you'll get an idea of what the, op, the offsite or affiliate sites, how many different kinds that there may be, some focusing on IV medicine or some focusing on pain or some really being as primary care sites and a little bit more about the school site, school residencies and what is expected of you there. So checking out these videos um, would be really helpful to get an idea of what you might be interested in so that once the application portal does open and you, you'll be able to immediately zero in on the opportunities that would be of interest to you. Thank you. Thank you all. So I uh, just wanted to let you know uh, before we move into question and answer that we have uh, A&MC, as many of you probably do know, host monthly events. Uh, many of these events are geared to future ND students, but some of these might be helpful for you as you're navigating uh, various different career choices to see how other NDs have done things, how they have set up their practices. So just wanted to keep you posted that if you sign up for our newsletter, uh, you can opt in for events and just kind of get those as they come through. Uh, January will be hosting a Career Changers web webinar, uh, and some of them will be talking about how they've set up their practices as well. So uh, just lots of different information for you at AMC as you move on to the next phase of your career. Uh, so now on to questions. Um, before we get into questions, I just wanted to put this up there. If throughout the course of you know this week or next week or as we get through, if you're having any questions related to residencies, this is the email you will use. Um, Emily is usually on the other end of that. So uh, just so you know where you know we will do our best to try and respond back to you. Um, again, when Dr. Garcia was talking about how to be prepared, one of the things that I could stress probably a gazillion times is to not wait until the last minute. Uh, we have often had students emailing us like five minutes before the portal closes. I'm having problems logging in. We may not be working. It might be like in the middle of the night for Emily or something. So, uh, <clears throat> you know, I just want to let you know that we will do our best to respond to emails and what have you. But if you're waiting until the last minute, that there may be issues with, you know, not getting a response until the deadline has passed. So just again, really, really, really stressing, try and be as proactive as you can, get organized, all of those um, deadlines that Dee put in earlier, pop those in with me with reminders in there for you in your calendar, like get organized now so that you have a system. So if something emergently does happen last minute, you're good. So um, with that, we're going to start taking some questions. I'm going to stop the share just so that we can uh, see folks a little bit better here and start managing um, the questions some. So let's see. Uh, <clears throat> will you have access to so the first question? Will you have access to these slides? Um, Emily popped in uh, the recording videos. So we're going to email a re this recording of today out to, to you all uh, who have registered to this. So there will be a recording of these slides um, available. So, um, and, and Emily, we can, we can send the slides out. So uh, feel free to unmute yourself if you have a question or raise your hand, or you can pop it in the chat. So 
show. Hi, Emily, go ahead. Hi. Um, so I have like kind of a few questions, but could you just have a brief overview over all the kind of documents and things that we should have lined up before February 1st, like including the CV personal statement and then how many um, letters of recs that we require, like we're needed and anything else that we should have prepared? Sure, would somebody like to take that? Yeah, I'll take that if you wanna put that slide back. I believe it was number 11. Um, and I will say that this is all really well recapped for you in the presentations that are on a &MC. Also, once you do create your profile, if you go to the uh, resource library, there is a how-to document with an actual step-by-step -step process. Yeah, uh, the slide you were just on, yes, thank you. Um, with a step-by-step -step process of everything that you can do in phase one. So um, that that's probably gonna be your best written form, but and in that resource library, you'll get the rules about what is supposed to be on the CV and the formatting. So your required documents are over here on the right-hand side, recapped. Um, as the request came in. So one CV, one personal statement. Uh, there are three essays. Um, there are, is the scanned, which will put into one document, but all of that's on the how-to guide. The essay prompts are also um, in the resource library on in the document about essays. So these are things that you can go in now and download and start thinking about how you want to respond to them. You'll need a scanned copy of your NPLEX one, uh, or if you have not yet taken it, but are planning to take it in February during the application season, you need to uh, upload a document that you have registered in February. Uh, you will need three faculty evaluations. The how-to guide will walk you through how to solicit your evaluations. Um, and then you'll also need a copy of your official school transcript. And again, that how-to document will walk you through how to request that from your school directly. So you do not have to pay to get an official transcript through your school's regular transcript process. I know some schools charge. Um, so we have this linked up directly, directly with the registrars at all of the colleges so that this can be uploaded for you automatically. So really that's the... Um, the overview of the required documents and all the instructions are mostly on the how-to guide. Thank you, Dr. Saunders. Okay, uh, Jessica. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for um, this presentation. It was helpful. Um, my couple questions are just, if we haven't sat for the NPLEX 2, what do we do? And if our final transcripts don't have the last courses because we still have spring term, at least at past year, um, how does that look when we apply if there's things that aren't complete? I'll, I'll go ahead and answer that. So um, I would say the lion's share of applicants will not have taken NPLEX 2 yet, um, if you're speaking specifically of the clinical boards. The clinical boards take place in August and residency starts um, at the end of September or October 1st in most cases. A prerequisite of starting your residency once you've been, um, you match with it, is that you do need to pass NPLEX 2. Um, so there'll be a handful of people that maybe took a gap year and they've already taken their boards and they'll be applying already licensed. So there's no advantage or disadvantage of doing that. And people that have taken gap years have great chances also at getting residency. but NPLEX 2 is not required to apply. It is required to start your residency. And then NPLEX 1, if you have not sat for basic sciences yet, or you haven't passed and you're planning to retake it next February, then you just need to upload a document saying your intention is to take um, the uh, NPLEX 1 in February. And then in terms of uh, final semester, nobody will have their final semester slash quarter grades in there. So that's okay. Um, there, that is a, an element that the site directors understand. So hopefully it doesn't mean that you take a vacation um, on all your courses, your final, you know, semester or anything like that, but all, everyone requesting them here at the end of uh, fall or beginning of winter will obviously be missing um, anything moving forward. And, and that's fine. 
Obviously, you'll have to graduate to be able to uh, meet the requirements to sit for NPLEX two. So you'll have to finish out that last quarter or semester or whatever your school is on. Um, and then you'll have to pass the NPLEX two to start. Thank you, Dr. Saunders. Uh, Nina has her hand raised. Uh, yes, um, I've been trying to get um, like the um, faculty evaluations, and I, and um, every time I ask them to upload it, though they don't they don't show up. So I've had to ask them multiple times: is is there something wrong, or did I do it too early? Because I um, because I started doing it in um, like August, or like right after I finished the Mplex two. So, so let me just jump in a little bit. Um, Nina, can you just um, clarify this for me? When when you say you're having difficulty in downloading the evaluation? Oh no no no! Uh, it's no like I'm able to send the application to my uh, uh -huh. the, the uh, request to the Yeah, the but request like, to your to your faculty. You're able to do that. That that yeah, was successful. But, okay. Yes, but the problem is, is that they'll tell me that they did send it, okay. and then I won't be able to see it. And so then I have to ask them to do it right. again. And so okay, got it. So what my, my suggestion is if if your faculty has assured you that they have already um, completed the evaluation online, then just go ahead and email um, Emily. And Emily will certainly get, get to one of the residency directors to, to check if it's in there. And um, and if it's in there, it's gonna get processed and it should be then um, placed in your credentials portion of the uh, uh, in the portal. All right. Is, are there any um, other like uh, like directions I should give to them, or like when they fill it out, or how to submit it, or? No, it's it's an it's an online app. It's an it's an online form. So what they really need to do is they really need to make sure that it it's timed. I Meaning to say, it's not going to be open for like five hours. So I, uh, my recollection is that it, uh, if if you open the form and you begin it, you're given about forty five minutes to complete it. Oh. Um, and most of it is multiple choice, um, and the and um, there is a space there towards the end if they want to cut and paste, for example, um, a lengthy um, um, what would you say is um, something like a recommendation letter. They can actually even cut and paste it into a portion of additional comments. So the, 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 there's the, there is some um, capacity to do that, but the key thing to remember is that um, they have to complete it online, and they have to make sure that they get it done within a set period of time, or else it'll time out on them. If it times out on them, then they're going to have to do it all over again. Then it becomes a big problem. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Dr. Garcia. I would definitely say from probably mo most of the evaluators at this point know that they need to complete it in a finite time. But if maybe you're asking somebody who is new to the system, they might not realize that it times out, but that is also in the instructions to the uh, to the site evaluators to make sure that they know that they need to be able to com complete the full process within 45 minutes. Like they can't step away, go see five patients and then come back to it because it will have timed out. <clears throat> okay. Uh, Let's see, Jessica, and thank you to those who are answering the questions in the chat. I appreciate you. Um, yeah, can any accredited naturopathic medical school students sit for the Kono exams in the in Canada? Even though I'm like I'm in a U.S. school, is it okay to sit for those as well? That's a really good question, Jessica. I don't know. Um, I, I will find out if you can. Uh, and and we'll post that. I I don't know why. Um, yeah, that had never been posted. So I'm I'm happy to to find that response for you, Jessica. Thanks for asking. Thank you so much. Okay. Hey, any additional questions? And again, if you have questions after the fact. Residency directors are all available. Uh, we, you know, please email. And I saw Emily just popped in the email again. Thank you, Emily, for any further questions uh, that you may have after this event is over. Uh, but please start poking around uh, into the the documents and you know getting yourself accustomed to you know beefing up your CV. Um, ask for help. I think. One of the, the the biggest things that we've seen with students is sometimes you feel like you have to do it all yourself. 
ask for help. The schools have career resources. They are there to help you with CVs and pulling that together. Like get get folks, get a sec- second set of eyes. Uh, there are so many different ways of, of using your community to help you be a strong applicant. So take advantage of the tools that you have. Um, so let's see. Uh, Catherine, I'm just reading. <clears throat> Whose email are you looking for, uh, Catherine? Uh, Doctor, sorry, excuse me. Dr. Wheeler from SageMend. Okay. Um, Dr. Garcia, would you be able to? Sure. uh, Um, Why don't you do this, um, Emily? If you, I'm sorry, um, Catherine, if you can just email me and I'll I'll be more than happy to email you all of the different um, uh, contact information, all the sites that you might be interested in. Okay. Thank you. Um, let's see, just just one thing about the NPLEX-1. Um, this has been a big bugaboo also by <laughs> some of the students. Um, sometimes um, they think they have a copy of their NPLEX-1 scores and they sort of just leave it in the background, you know, because they're busy doing other things. Of course, they're schooling. The, that, that's another thing that they pay attention to. And before you know it, uh, the timeline is coming up and then they try to look for the NPLEX one and lo and behold, they can't find it. Either they moved or they thought they had it, they lost it. So now they're gonna request it from NAVNI. Uh, if you're going to, if you don't have it, you might as well do it now. That's part of being prepared because NAVNI um, takes a long time to respond. So if you moved recently, you put it in a box, you're not so sure where it is, um, you please please request for that NPLEX one score right now while there's still time because it will take a few weeks sometimes for for NAVNI to to even respond. The other piece is that uh, sometimes NAVNI will say I, we are going to send you an unofficial um, um, NPLEX one transcript, and some students then panic and say no we I, I need I need the official one. Well, actually, all you need is really the copy that you've actually passed NPLEX one. That that that's what we're that's what the sites are interested in. So if you have a copy that was mailed to you way back when, that would be good enough. Or if you receive a copy from NABNI, a, a new Xbox One score, um, even if it's unofficial, it's uploaded in in the My Documents portion on 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 your account, that would be fine too. So I just wanted to point that out. All right. Well, if there are no other questions. Uh... Thank you all for joining this morning. We appreciate you taking some time off and on a Sunday morning here or afternoon. And uh, <clears throat> again, we will look forward to uh, seeing your applications roll in. Best of luck to you all. And here is to an, a wonderful uh, start of your future. So thank you all. Best best wishes, best luck. And uh, we're here for, for you all as you need help. Thanks again. Okay. Goodbye, everybody. Have a good rest of the day. Bye-bye now. Bye, all.